Hello again and welcome to another IKB virtual assembly. We're in term six, it's week four now. We are marching on through the summer term and I've heard, that even though it's still been a bit gray out recently, that the good weather is coming back. And that's really good because as you can see, this assembly today is about the summer. We wanna celebrate the summer, hopefully get some wonderful sunshine, have a great summer holiday that will be coming up in, we've got four weeks left, just four weeks left now, um, even less than that now, three and a half weeks left until the summer holiday begins. And so today I want to talk about some summertime traditions. Now, uh, we're going to start off with the Allenson family party. And you might be thinking, why am I looking at a load of random people, the Allenson family party? Well, the Edies, that's my dad's name, but my mum is an Allenson. So we're a big part of the Allenson family party. Now, every year, ever since uh, some of them moved away to Canada and America and places like that, we've decided to meet up every year. So to make sure everyone gets to see each other all the cousins got loads of cousins it's great to meet up with them we have the aunties and uncles flying in from america and canada some of them and it's just a wonderful thing that we always meet up every year it's a summer tradition so every august the allenson family uh, all all seven of them the main ones meet up and then of course all their kids and their kids have had kids and kids have had kids and kids and so there are hundreds that were well, not hundreds of us but there are loads now lots and lots and lots of people and it's great to meet up every year as a bit of a tradition a summertime tradition to see them all and looking at these pictures obviously you don't know any of these people but oh dear maybe you might recognize someone okay so moving on let's talk about british culture and some traditions we have in the summertime because it's quite sad to say but some of these traditions we're going to talk about today will have been cancelled this year due to the coronavirus pandemic they won't be taking place but we'll be able to hopefully do some of these you can still have some lovely walks in the countryside you can still stand in the rain with your umbrella uh, and hopefully we will get to go to the seaside at some point i've just been told that sometimes i like to go to wales uh, i love some of the parts of of wales some of the some of the coastline there is amazing i've just heard that that's hopefully going to be opening again in july at some point so i'm really hoping i'm going to get down there but there's all sorts of other things we've got the summer solstice at uh, stonehenge we've got wimbledon I think that's a picture of, I oh know it's not Wimbledon at all. That's just a seaside picture. We are going to talk about Wimbledon as one of our traditions. And now not just British traditions, they're worldwide traditions. We've got the Chinese New Year. We've got Christmas. We've got Santa Claus, Father Christmas, and all sorts of other carnivals and festivals and parades that happen all the time. So what is a tradition? Let's have a look. Okay, so it says here, we've got a belief or a principle or a way of acting that people of a particular society or group have followed and continue to follow for a a long time becoming a annual or maybe more than yearly tradition sometimes it's linked to a specific culture uh, or a specific religion or a demographic location and these people have these traditions that are really important to them and maybe i'm sure that you or your family have specific traditions that are important to you as well even if it's just things like christmas or halloween or things like that so some british traditions like we said halloween has come over from america but it's quite an important tradition now uh, some traditions do travel all the world and other countries pick them up because they're such good fun or they feel like they're applicable to them they mean something to them what do we got there oh roast beef the sunday roast that's a that's a certain british tradition i don't have it every sunday but i know people that do some people that have every sunday they're having the the, the, the roasts so fair play to them and also over in the corner i'm covering up a bit there but you know cream tea sunday tea something very british as well so what else there we go. Yeah. Talking about a Sunday roast or an afternoon tea. So um, like we said, some of these things that we're going to talk about today won't be happening this year. They'll be all locked down, unfortunately, due to coronavirus. But it's still good to remember them, think about them and get excited about maybe planning them for next year. So what have we got? Wimbledon. Oh, really love Wimbledon. It's one of my favourites, actually. The oldest tennis tournament in the world and considered the most prestigious. It's been going on since 1877. Okay, where it's been held in Wimbledon at the All England Club. And it's one of only four, only four Grand Slam tournaments. So what else we've got? The French Open, the US Open and the Australian Open, along with Wimbledon. Now, all those other ones, they've moved off grass now. Wimbledon is the only tournament of that sort that's still played on grass. So I think it's really important that this tradition continues, especially because it used to be tennis used to be called lawn tennis. The whole idea was you play it on grass. More and more it's moving to clay court and hard surfaces. It's really good that we still do have Wimbledon. 
Wimbledon. So taking place in late June, early July. Lovely. Look forward to getting back from school and seeing who's played and watching it. Brilliant. Especially when those tournaments go on into set five or six, seven sets. It's really exciting. Goes on most of the evening. Brilliant stuff. So another one is the Edinburgh Fringe. Real interesting. You might not have heard of the Edinburgh Fringe. It's a real uh, big event for the arts, for theatre, for drama, that sort of thing. Um, and as you can see here, look at this. 25 days, 55,000 performances of over 3,500 different shows, more than 300 venues. This is a big deal. What's really interesting about this is that it's open access performing arts. There's not a selection committee saying, yeah, you're good enough. No, you can't. Anyone can come along and do a show. So uh, me and my wife, uh, we know quite a few dramatic sorts. Okay, we've done some theatre in the past and lots of them have, have taken their show up there and taken their show to Edinburgh and it's supposed to be an amazing experience. It doesn't just do drama. It can be, um, there is drama, there's theatre, comedy, there's dance, physical theatre, circus, cabaret, children's shows, opera, music, spoken word, exhibitions, events, loads of stuff going on in Edinburgh happens every summer. OK, so maybe something that you think, wow, that sounds interesting. Maybe one day you'd like to get involved or go up there and watch. OK, so what else have we got? London Pride. OK, so it's an annual as it says here, LGBT Pride Festival. There's a wonderful, colourful parade that goes all through London. Uh, there are events happening in uh, Trafalgar Square, free events. Uh, brilliant, brilliant event, this, that um, brings together so many different people. People come from all over the country uh, to get involved in this. And it brings together people of different ethnicities, different sexualities, different genders, different races, all these people coming together to celebrate positivity. It's such a positive joyful festival i've been to the one in bristol a few times and it's just been so much fun okay so there's that as well what else we got moving on staying in london but notting hill carnival excellent it's got quite an interesting history to it um notting hill carnival um here we go as it says here managed by the the people of British West Indian communities and uh, very significant each year. It started in 1958 where racial tensions between different groups in the communities became, they, it came to a head really and ended up with riots going on for three days where over a hundred people was were, were arrested over the bank holiday weekend. So obviously that was quite a negative thing and people wanted to make it more of a positive, a positive area and have something positive in that bank holiday time to celebrate. So someone called Claudia Jones came Came up with the idea of organizing this event and it's just grown and grown and grown 60 years on uh, 2 million visitors a year okay 2 million visitors a year it's one of the biggest festivals in the whole world the only festival that's bigger is rio rio's um, in, in brazil the carnival in rio it sells 11 times more tickets than glastonbury it's 11 times bigger than glastonbury notting hill it really is a massive event again there's a big parade you get bands you get all the different flavors all the street food of all these different cultures and it's an amazing amazing event a bit closer to home we've got st paul's carnival and that's something that i go to every year as you can see there that the street food is amazing it's so colorful they've got a parade that goes all the way through st paul's and it's really worth going to i think it's a lot of joyful celebration going on there as well and people put so much effort into their costumes and the dance and everything and it's it's free it's free to get in i'd highly recommend that one uh, began began again a very long time ago 1968 it began um, and it was to to create a positive event to improve friendship between the communities that lived in St Paul's at the time uh, which was European African Caribbean and Asian inhabitants um, and from that they have these big floats and a big carnival procession that goes through and it's excellent so I do recommend you go and have a look at that if you haven't already so we've already mentioned it and we're staying in the southwest we've got Glastonbury Festival that's something I've been to lots and lots especially when I was uh, leaving school that sort of age I used to go every year in fact it's pretty much the only way you can get me to go camping is if I'm going to a music festival. Not just Glastonbury, of course, you've got Reading and Leeds, you've got V Festival, loads of other festivals, and they're all awesome. You just get this such a wonderful uh, community. 
a positive sense in these places. Of course, it's not just for music. You get the big headliners. You can see you've got Stormzy and Beyonce there. Loads of other stuff like dance, comedy, theater, circus, cabaret, arts, crafts, people making stuff, face painting, and just everyone having a great time. Uh, the food is is not as good as some of these other places we've talked about, some of the carnivals and stuff like that. And actually the food's really expensive in Glastonbury. So we used to take our own super noodles and that's something, but that's another story anyway. But it's been going on since the 1970s uh, Glastonbury. Again, this started off being a free festival where Michael Evis used to bring down free milk from his cows for people but since then it's grown and grown and grown it's on most years as you know uh, but they do leave the field fallow every few years that means they give it a chance to recover uh, after all the people have been trampling on it and all the stages and everything but Glastonbury I would say really would recommend you do try and go to a festival it's a real amazing life experience Okay, what else have we got here? Ah, back in Bristol. So the Balloon Fiesta happens every August in Bristol. I love going to this. It's in the summer holidays, free to get in and just wonderful. It's just marvellous to see the scale of these balloons. Uh, they're launched every 6 a.m. in the morning and they come floating over. I'm sure most of you have seen these uh, these balloons floating over Bristol if you haven't been to the Fiesta yourself, but you should go. It's wonderful there. You can see some of the pictures here. There's the night glow that happens every evening where they all glow up the balloons. It's brilliant. Loads of other events and loads of stalls and food stuff going on, all that sort of thing as well. So Bristol Balloon Fiesta is awesome a real good one and also you've got the harbour festival happens in the summer as well this started off i think was it in the 1970s yeah 1971 where they were trying to stop the whole the docks area being filled in and turned into what actually now is the city center so they, they didn't win that battle it did actually get filled in but um, they were raising money for that. And the idea just was everyone had so much fun that um, they've made it an annual tradition there. It's loads of music. You've got um, you get stages put on at like Millennium Square, Queen Square, um, Lloyd's, the Lloyd's Amphitheatre, SS Great Britain. Again, loads of music free to see and just a wonderful wonderful atmosphere going on there so look out for that in the summer sadly don't think it's going to be on this summer but do look out for it in the future so these are just a few of one of the wonderful summer events that you can go to in britain loads of these we've talked about today are in the southwest and 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 available for you to kind of get there easy to easy enough to get there but sadly as we said due to the coronavirus lots of these won't be going on this year but they are really important to remember the way we bring together all the diversity in the country all different cultures different races ethnicities sexualities and genders all coming together to celebrate positive things in the summertime so there we go i really hope we can get back to this sort of thing as soon as possible definitely by next summer and maybe some of these things will actually still take place this summer just gonna have to wait and see so that's it for us the allensons won't be meeting this year sadly uh, but we already got plans to meet up um meet up next year and be great to see them all again because i do miss them when i don't see them all the other allensons and eds and things like that so there's there he is little Edie there there me anyway that's it for us today thanks for watching any questions or comments please email me but uh see you soon